Registered Phenomena Code 237 Object Class Alpha Red Hazard Types Aggression Animated Auditory Contact Mind Control Teleportation Sapient Containment Protocols RPC-237 is to be kept disassembled within its box in Storage Locker 9F on Site-473. Each of RPC-237 pieces are to be wrapped separately with cellophane wrapping. Each piece, whenever studied, must be studied individually and without contact to any other pieces of RPC-237. In the event RPC-237 begins reassembling, site security is to be notified immediately. An additional 348 instances of RPC-237 have been found. These instances have yet to exhibit any anomalous activity. The boxes of RPC-237 are to remain closed until further notice. In the event of an undocumented RPC-237 instance, personnel are advised to approach with extreme caution. Assembled instances versus disassembled instances of RPC-237 may have behavioral patterns regarding when it will attack and when it will become inanimate that deviate from prior observations. Description: RPC-237 is a construction toy similar in design to the Bionicle toy line by the LEGO Company. When assembled, RPC-237 stands 37.8 cm in height, is colored black, and bears translucent dark orange eyes and ribcage, both of which reportedly glow faintly when present in the same room as sapient organisms. RPC-237 is constructed out of unidentified hybrid material that appears to be made of acrylic and steel, excluding the ribcage and eyes, which are an unidentifiable orange crystalline structure. RPC-237 is particularly notable for possessing two subulent horns, elongated claws, and extended front teeth. The cardboard box in which RPC-237 has been found within has a picture of RPC-237 on it. The name of the product's line, dubbed Biomechanical Warriors, as well as the words Kyer Sefer the Lich. It also reads on the back, Warning, Choking Hazard, with an age warning prohibiting interaction by children three years of age or younger. The box retains the logo of Amazing Co., as well as numerous pictures of RPC-237 breathing green fire and fighting other creatures of similar design. RPC-237 possesses the innate ability to produce multiple limbs from its body and has been observed breaking off and forcing these limbs down nearby victims' throats. These limbs will begin to tear at the tissue present within the victim's throat, resulting in asphyxiation as a result of blood flowing into the lungs. RPC-237 appears to target children primarily with this technique. RPC-237 method differs with adults, instead aggressively targeting tissue near the eyes, limbs, and throat. After the victim is rendered lifeless, RPC-237 will open its mouth and produce a mechanical resonance. Upon expiration of the subject from asphyxiation, bodily functions would continue once more after two minutes following the resonance produced by RPC-237. Revived subjects are designated RPC-237-1. RPC-237-1 instances, when revived, undergo cellular necrosis of the skin and an increase in hormonal cell production, coupled with high levels of aggression. Instances exhibit marginally increased physical strength, but are somewhat limited in basic neurological activity. These instances are also reported to produce a contagion that, when physical contact is made by a subject, will inflict the same aforementioned effects. All RPC-237-1 instances attempt to protect RPC-237, as well as violently attack any sapient organism it encounters. All instances have been reported to be in possession of RPC-237. Reportedly, if contact between RPC-237 and RPC-237-1 is breached for long periods of time, RPC-237-1 will eventually expire. 
RPC-237 additionally appears to have teleportation capability. However, it renders the item inanimate for a long period of time, as it remains inactive for weeks at a time before becoming animate. As such, RPC-237 tends to teleport to certain locations and compounds where sapient life is few and far between, such as ventilation systems, sewage systems, etc. Research shows that it is impossible for RPC-237 to teleport when disassembled. Since an instance's disassembly, the ability has never been exhibited again. Recovery RPC-237 was recovered in a home in England on 23rd, 2000. An embedded agent in the local police force encountered an instance of RPC-237-1 when responding to a report of a suspected homicide in progress, which took the form of a child who, despite fatal lacerations around the neck, was alive and attempted to attack an officer while holding RPC-237 in one hand. After successfully injuring the officer with the aforementioned item, the child fled the scene. Agent requested deployment of Mobile Specialized Team Hotel 1, Highlanders, initially believing the instance was an outbreak of RPC, which was granted. The instance was tracked to the child's property. After the failure of attempted reasoning, MST Hotel 1 proceeded to deploy incendiary weaponry on the RPC-237-1 instance, successfully terminating it. After termination of the RPC-237-1, RPC-237 became animate and attempted to escape, attacking two Authority operatives and severely injuring them before suddenly becoming inanimate. The object was secured by MST Hotel 1. Parents of the child were found in the hallway of the house. The father, Mr. Dean, had had his arm severely mangled by what appears to be the child's teeth and was missing his right thumb and his left index and ring finger, and was in an unconscious state due to blood trauma. Both injuries were barely cauterized with a torn tea towel by Mobile Specialized Team Hotel 1. Mr. Wife, Mrs. Marta, was in a much worse condition, suffering from massive blood loss as a result of several torn tendons. Mrs. expired from her injuries before medical attention was available, while Mr. recovered from his injuries and was interviewed immediately following general surgery was completed. See Addendum-1 Addendum-1 Mr. was interviewed by Dr. Montegru on 2000 The interview is attached below. Interviewed Mr. Interviewer Dr. Montegru Board. An interview with the father of RPC-237's first recorded victim, conducted in hope of obtaining further information about RPC-237. Began log. Good evening, Mr. Thank you for agreeing to partake in this interview with us. How did you first obtain the item? Well, Marta and I bought the set for our son, Bryce, while we were walking down Avenue, and we bought it from a a junkyard sale, if I'm not mistaken. The sale was at number 54. Marta told me that Bryce loved Bionicle sets, so we asked for a price. It was only 20 pounds, so we decided to grab it for him as a treat. Alright. When did the object in question exhibit any anomalous properties? I was out for dinner with a couple of colleagues from work. Marta was at home looking at the Bryce. At this point, you had given the set to your son? Yes. I was called on my phone by Marta. She was screaming. She kept saying, the thing in the box. It was the thing in the box, over and over. I left the restaurant straight away and headed home because I was worried. So did your wife say anything about when the creature came to life? Yes, she did. She said all Bryce and she did would build the bloody thing, and it just sprang to life. And where was your son at this stage? How would I have the faintest idea? Right. Sorry. What did you do when you came home? Well, the front door was wide open, and the house was, for the most part, normal. But when I got to Bryce's room, he was missing. Marta was in the living room, 
dialing 999. I asked her what was wrong and… and where Bryce was. She said Bryce was gone. Said that the toy was… was using him like a puppet. And when did your son arrive and attack you? I was trying to calm down Marta. When Bryce came home, he was holding that bloody toy in his hand. His throat was… You could see his bloody collarbone. It was that bad. And then he… It… Attacked us. It went for Marta first. I tried to claw the fucker off, but I just couldn't do anything. I picked up the poker from the fireplace and smashed that thing with it. And it turned on me. It went for my arm. The last thing I saw was a group of gents storm the place and let it rip on the thing. Then I woke up here. Hmm. Alright. Well, thank you, mister, for your time. This information should help us greatly. Happy to help, Doctor. End log. Closing Statement Following the interview, Mr. exhibited symptoms of necrosis before expiring. Hours following expiration, Mr. became an RPC-237-1 instance and was terminated by site security. Mrs body, having not exhibited any anomalous properties, was immediately cremated. Searches for the individual mentioned by Mr. are ongoing. Addendum 2 The house where RPC-237 had been purchased from was raided on 2000 The house owner reportedly abandoned the premise days before, but 23 instances of RPC-237 were found unopened and were transferred to Site-473. These 23 boxes have yet to exhibit any anomalous activity, but are to be monitored closely. Coordinates to an undisclosed location were found in the kitchen, written in lead pencil on a tax file form. Addendum 3 The coordinates found at the original RPC-237 seller's house led to an abandoned factory in Japan and was raided by Mobile Specialized Team Romeo-7, suited gentlemen. Within the site, approximately 325 unopened boxes of RPC-237 were found within shipping crates. Two boxes were found open and missing their RPC-237 pieces. Blueprints were found on site on multiple benches, with unfinished figures in the process of being built. MST Romeo-7 secured the 325 boxes blueprints, and unfinished figures, and transferred them to Site-473. The study of all items is ongoing. Addendum 4 Shipping label found with crates of RPC-237 Kyre Sefford the Lich, children's construction toy, a product of Amazing Co. 1,000 units Incident Log 237-1 Darren study by Dr. One of the retrieved prototypes sprang to life and began to elicit a mechanical resonance similar to RPC-237's. The prototype then proceeded to display pyrokinetic capabilities as it began to spray Dr. with continuous flame. The prototype was destroyed by site agents via shotgun fire. All prototypes have been disassembled and stored away similar to RPC-237 and further research is to be approved by Site Director Azuki Masamoto. Dr. survived the incident and is currently recovering from injuries.